Hello, welcome to Backups the Basics. If you've never touched SQL Server and you don't know how to do a backup, you're in the right place. My name is Kevin, and if I'm on Twitter, I'm known as Kevin3NF, or at Kevin3NF, also known from in a couple of places as the On Purpose DBA, because of my, uh, my love of teaching accidental DBAs more and more about SQL Server Basics, so they get off on the right foot. I've got 18 years of SQL Server experience, lots and lots of versions in the past, and quite a few more to come, no doubt. I can be reached at Kevin at DallasDBAs.com. Feel free to email me or drop by the site, check out the blog postings, and uh, see if there's anything there that appeals to you. A lot of it is very basic, but that's what I do, is I teach brand new people so they don't panic and they get going and get their career started well if they're uh, looking to become admins. The target audience for this, as you probably already picked up, if you're a DBA, you're going to be bored. For developers, SQL developers, .NET, you name it, you guys are all probably developing against a database of some sort. It would be very good to know how to take a backup, especially if you're working on your local workstation and you've got, a, it got an install of SQL Developer Edition. You may want to actually save your database work as well as your, uh, your application code. Sysadmins, if you're the best Linux or Windows guy on the planet and you've never touched SQL Server, welcome. You are, this is for you. Managers, your DBA is on vacation, there's a problem, somebody needs a copy of the database to test something on, this is for you as well. All right, in order to take a GUI-based backup, because we are not going to write any, any code to do this today, you might see a little bit, you need to get into the SQL Server Management Studio utility. This is what uh, the front end, basically it's a client application just like anything else that talks to SQL Server, it's just organized in order to get administrative work done. Go into your run or search or whatever you've got, start run. All the modern operating systems have something similar to this. Type in SSMS. And if this is installed, it'll pop right up. Click that and you'll see the GUI that DBAs like myself have been in love with for at least 10 years since they introduced this version. First thing you're going to get is a connect to server dialog. You can connect to any SQL server that you have rights to using either Windows authentication or SQL Server authentication. It depends on your environment. Stick with Windows authentication just as a first shot and see what happens. Hopefully you have the rights to do this if you're trying to back up the databases. Otherwise, you're going to have to go get those rights from somebody. Hit your Connect button, and you see all the basic stuff that you would normally expect about a SQL Server. Lots of different choices here. You can drill down to any of these. The only one we care about today is the databases node. Under the databases, you'll notice that I have a whole bunch of stuff, one of which is called system databases. We need to back these up, but we're going to bypass that today. We're only going to talk about the AdventureWorks database because the scenario we're looking at here is something bad happened. We called Microsoft, and they said, send us a backup of your database, and they're waiting. And it's, go ahead and assume it's fairly important that we get this resolved quickly, which is why we're going through the GUI. First thing you want to do here, really, if you need to get a backup quickly, is go to the properties of the database and check out the last time the database was backed up. I did this one just a few minutes ago. Prior to that, it, had, it said July. So I have a backup from today, but I'm going to pretend I don't, and we're going to make one just like I didn't have it already. So cancel out of that. This is where it gets really simple. Oh, something about the Management Studio GUI. If you're presented with a choice and it says, are you sure? And if you're not, always just hit escape or cancel. If you're not sure, don't do it. All right. So to back up AdventureWorks, we'll go to Tasks, Backup. It's very, very cleverly hidden right there in the menu. All right. There's very few choices we have to make here. The database we want to back up is AdventureWorks. We want to take a full backup, which is all of the data in it. A differential would be, say, if you took a, f a full backup on Sunday and on Tuesday you wanted to take a, a smaller one, this is what you would use to get everything that had changed since Sunday. But for today's conversation, we're going to do a full. And in this case, I'm going to do a copy only. What that does is that just doesn't mess up the string of normal backups that my DBA probably already has in place. It's, it's a choice. It's going to give you the exact same thing on the outside when you go, when you go looking for the file. Nothing will change between these two. I like to do this if I'm doing an ad hoc backup that's outside of my normal procedures. Down here, we have a choice of where we're going to back it up. We've got the location and the database name. That was already defaulted in, so we're just going to take it out. 
go to add and you can put this anywhere you want we'll, we'll browse down and we'll take a look go to C program files Microsoft SQL Server MSSQL 12 is 2014 which doesn't make any sense if you're not familiar with the uh, numbering and history of SQL Server but this is the version that that I'm working on and it's the one that my my AdventureWorks lives in I do have two SQL servers installed here uh, MSSQL and backup if you'll notice there are folders under here as well one for each of my databases both system and user and so I'm going to take this down into the AdventureWorks database and I'm going to give it a new, a cool name like Adventure Works. I misspelled that on purpose just for fun. And dot .bak. BAK is the traditional, very widely used extension for full backup files. There are other backups you can do, and they have their own, their own standard extensions. You can call this dot .bob or dot you know anything you want dot .panic if you want to. But BAK is when people see that and their SQL, they know what they're looking at. So hit OK here. Hit OK again, and it's populated in there now. So, AdventureWorks is going to be backed up. We're going to take a full copy only to disk URL. That's a cool one. It's beyond the scope of this, but that's basically backing it up to a, to a cloud provider. And then this is these are, these are the specifics. Media options. You can do some do some things in here. Most of this stuff is going to be irrelevant for this kind of conversation where we're trying to get something for a uh, uh, support call to Microsoft. We have some things where you could ver verify that it's that it's a good backup. I'm not sure how valid that is anymore. Some things have changed. This screen pretty much doesn't offer you a whole lot that you need to worry about. Backup options, you can give the backup a name. You can give it a description. That's really just eye candy should you need to pick something out of a, out of a list at some point. It's not required. The one thing in here that I do want to encourage you to do always when you have the option to compress the backup, do it. It makes sending it off to Microsoft a lot faster and takes up less disk space. There's zero reasons not to compress your backups. All right, before I hit OK and run this, I'm going to punch this script button up here, and you'll see behind this window that it's created a little bit of code for me. Exact same code as choosing all these options. Most of these dialog boxes in Management Studio give you that option. It's a great way to learn how to write the T SQL code or transact SQL code behind something that you're used to doing in the GUI. You do that, it makes you a stronger database person. All right, we'll go ahead and hit OK. It should take just a couple of seconds, and it did. And I believe, no, oh, I thought I had this the file explorer. We're going to go looking to see if we actually did get a file, and we certainly will have, but we want to make sure that it actually showed up before we tell Microsoft it's done and they say well great where is it and there it is that's the one we just took notice the spelling of the works that's just in case I had two or three others on here I wanted to make sure we could identify it this is one that was taken way back in July it was taken through an automated system that automatically appends the uh, the date and timestamp to it that's not what we we're doing today this was an ad hoc backup not a scheduled backup so it's there, and then from here we can send it off to wherever it may need to go. We could also copy it somewhere else and restore it to another box. Say if this was production and you needed to refresh the development environment with this current data, you just copy it down to another one and do a restore there. It's outside the scope of what we're talking about today because we're actually done with what this was supposed to be because it was really that simple. Just for kicks, we're going to look at a little bit of the code. Same thing. Backup database adventure works to this location. Copy only, give it an optional name. There's my one I want you to always use. You can type about half of this stuff and actually have it completely valid. You can take all of this out. You could delete the C that you didn't mean to delete. You could take all of this stuff out and you would still get a valid backup. So that's it. Right click, tasks back up, fill in a few blanks, and hit OK. It really is as simple as that. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I plan to do a whole lot more of these videos. If you thought it was amusing or useful or preferably not horrendous, please, I'm going to put this on YouTube, so leave me a comment or throw something at me on my blog. Love to hear from you. Thanks.